On bike, on horseback, or racing a car, no one has ever looked as good as Steve McQueen. The highest paid actor of his generation, McQueen was known as the King of Cool. There was never a more macho actor in Hollywood than Steve McQueen. But the key to this style icon's macho mystique was that even though he was an actor, it was never an act. Born in Indianapolis, where fast cars are a way of life, Steve McQueen always had a need for speed. He also had a need to rebel and spent time running with gangs. But Steve soon hit the brakes on a life of crime. He wanted to give acting a try as long as he could avoid becoming a Hollywood phony. He first starred in the TV series Wanted, Dead or Alive. With a wide brim hat and a sawed off shotgun, Steve certainly looked the part of a Wild West cowboy. I'm gonna make a living somehow. I'll see you now, yeah? Yeah. But his rugged, brooding undertones gave his cowboy look even more cred. Afraid of horses as a child, Steve knew that in order to truly look legit, he needed to master horseback riding to nail the cowboy persona. He lived the lifestyle that his clothes came from, so there was sort of an authenticity, and I, and I think that's what makes him so appealing. His next major style leap brought in his love of motorcycles in The Great Escape. As a World War II pilot, McQueen made being a prisoner of war look good. You see him in a movie like The Great Escape with khakis and a cut-off sweatshirt. And um, he's just incredibly stylish. I mean, those khakis were the perfect khakis, and the cut-off sweatshirt was cut off just right. His key accessory was his Triumph motorbike. An avid motorcycle racer in his spare time, McQueen impressed audiences as he confidently raced through the hills of Bavaria. His innate cool, both on screen and off, didn't go unnoticed. McQueen was made the first man ever to grace the cover of Harper's Bazaar in 1962, establishing him as a true leader of style. But McQueen's height of style came in 1968 in the Thomas Crown Affair, where he showed he could also clean up better than any man in Hollywood. You do live very well, don't you? No complaints. You see him in a movie like Thomas Crown Affair and he's got the three-piece suits on and look incredibly dapper and elegant. He could wear the $1,000 custom suit and he wore it like he owned it. Beautiful. But even in scenes when his character dressed down, he still wore his clothes and carried himself as only McQueen could. Also in 1968, McQueen's classic film Bullet was released. There, he proved all you needed was a tweed jacket, a turtleneck sweater, and a gun holster to look terrific. Of course, a hot car doesn't hurt. We see him in Bullet and, and the Mustang and, the, you know, and pounded down the street to San Francisco. And you believe because, he, you know, he was that guy. And, and he was acting to an extent, but, you know, he did live that life. When he wasn't shooting a film, the ever-cool McQueen was always very relaxed about his look off screen it was he was definitely more of the t-shirt and the, and the khakis uh the jeans you know um he would let himself go a lot more but you know he would always let himself go just just right you know and, and no one let himself go better than mcqueen tragically steve mcqueen's career was cut short he died in 1980 at age 50 during an operation to remove life-threatening tumors For decades, fashion labels have seized on Steve McQueen's cool. Many brands that he was associated with in life continue to use his image, hoping his cachet will rub off on their products. It's terrific marketing. People wanted to be like him, not because of the way he dressed, but because he embodied this cool from top to bottom. That's a classic formula that top fashion houses are constantly trying to recreate. He had a great style, uh, and I think it's been influential in men's fashion the last um, few years. Hollywood stars are always trying to recapture that McQueen mystique, but no one today can seem to quite get there. Someone like Orlando Bloom, very good looking guy, but maybe a little too fey or a little too skinny. Then you got someone like Russell Crowe, who's very macho and rugged, but a little, a little too macho and rugged for some people. Um, you know, Johnny Depp, maybe a little too kind of long haired and alternative. And McQueen, he's just kind of nailed it all. McQueen knew cool wasn't something that could be manufactured. It needs to be worn with authenticity. 
that was who he was. I think that's why I think he was he was a style icon because he wasn't reinventing himself. He was himself.